What is up guys? My name is Lex. Welcome to Virginia Key in South Miami. Why am I wearing a helmet? Well, because I'm going mountain biking right back here. Gonna hit the mountain biking trails. For this video, I'm gonna be going over some hands from a private game I played yesterday at Harris Pompano Beach. It's a pretty wild session, some swingy, wild hands. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's get started. All right, sitting down with this game, a little less than $3,000 in my stack. There's not too many straddles on in this game, so it's just playing 5-10. There's an early position call for $10. I have queen of spades, jack of diamonds, and the cutoff, I raised a 50. The button calls 50, small blind calls 50, and the limper calls 50. We go three ways, actually four ways, to 9-10-10 rainbow. When it checks to me, I bet $100 with my open-ended straight draw and two overcards. Button folds, small blind calls, and under the gun plus one calls. Turn card, king of clubs, giving me the nut straight. Now the board is paired. I have to be a little cautious about that. However, when the action checks to me, no checking from me. I bet $325. Unfortunately, no more action for us. They all fold and we get the chips. First interesting hand of the night is when the button puts on the $25 straddle. I have jacks now in the big blind race to 75. I get a ton of action here with a low jack, high jack, cut off, and button make the call. Five ways with pocket jacks to a board of 10, 10, 6, 2 hearts. Now, super multi-way with a one pair hand. I do have to be a little cautious. I could definitely be beat here by a 10, pocket sixes. Don't expect anyone to have a bigger overpair though. I decided to just bet out here 120 bucks. Kind of a small sizing on this board. And now the low jack player looks back at his hand and decides to go all in. He jams all in for around $900. The other players fold and the action's back over on me. And this is actually a pretty tough spot here with pocket jacks. Now we are losing obviously to any 10. 8, 10, 9, 10, ace, 10, king, 10, jack, 10. All those hands we're losing to. If he had pocket sixes for a full house, I doubt he jams all in. There is still a lot of hands that we are beating. Hands like ace, six, pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines, any flush draw. Given the fact that I have black pocket jacks here, I don't block him from having the jack of hearts for a flush draw. This is a private game. I'm willing to give more action here. It's very likely I could be beat, but it's also possible I could be ahead here against a flush draw, worst pocket pair. I'm really not sure what to do here with pocket jacks. My gut is telling me I'm no good, but I would hate to fold and have him show me a worse hand. I don't know what to do. Pause the video now. Let me know down in the comments what you would do in this situation with pocket jacks in a reserved private game facing an all-in. Would you call or would you fold? Eventually, I decide to make my decision. Twice. 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 If you have a 10, you're good. Nice. Also got two well, I ended up making the wrong decision. I called. He had King-10 offsuit. We did not get there with a full house, and we ended up losing around $1,000 here. I add on to my stack for a 2K. I'm now in the game for about $5,000. $25 straddle under the gun in this hand. Early position call for 25 Pocket 10s here in the hijack. I make it $100. Big blind, who I just doubled up, makes to call. Straddle makes to call, and the early position limper makes to fold. Three ways to ace, seven, eight, rainbow, action checks to me. I decide to check this one back. Turn card four, bringing in a flush draw. Both opponents check to me again, given the fact that nobody bet here on the turn. I feel like pocket tens are gonna be the best hand. I bet out 125 bucks. Big blind makes to call and the other player makes to fold. We're now heads up here in position to a nice river card, 10, giving us a set. My opponent checks to me feel like he can easily have a weaker ace here. A lot of players do not like to fold top pair, especially after I check back the flop. So I decide to go large here on the river with my set. I make it $650. He very quickly folds his hand and we win. I think I probably should have went a little bit smaller there, probably 300, 350, probably too big on the river, but we win, get a little bit back from that bad beat with pocket jacks. 
Next, another pocket pair dealt in for us, this time six of hearts, six of spades, I raise, get three callers, four ways, two, six, deuce, deuce, flopping top, full house, this is a good flop for pocket sixes, action checks to me, I could check and try to trap, given the fact that I have this board completely crushed, but versus players who like to see turns and rivers, I'm just gonna bet, so I make it $80, big blind calls, early position limper makes to call, and we're now three ways to the four of spades on the turn. Big blind checks. Now early position limper leads out into me for a $400 bet. This is music to my eyes. We got pocket sixes, full house we're getting led into. But now the question is, do we continue to slow playing call or should we put in the raise? If I was heads up, I would consider raising here. But given the fact that the big blind still in the hand, I want to allow him to call with some drawing hands as well. Don't want to scare him away, so I just call $400. Big blind makes a very quick fold. Going here to the river, which is the 10 of diamonds. Unfortunately, my opponent slows down and checks over to me. As you saw in the video taken by my friend, I decided to go $1,200 here on the river and my opponent snap folded. My thoughts were it's possible he could be pot controlling with a weaker deuce. And if I was bluffing here with a straight draw or missed flush draw that I missed on the river, I'd want to go big as well, representing big over pairs, trying to get him off weaker one pair hands. So I went huge. He folded. Maybe he just had a four or a missed flush draw. No idea. But we're slowly clawing back now. Our stack is up over $5,000 in the game for 5k. That means we have around a four or $500 profit so far. Another hand, which means another pocket pair. This time, aces. The best possible hand you can get pre-flop. I raise and everybody folds. Oh my god. How tilting is that? This must be the pocket pair poker vlog. Pocket threes this time. Three of diamonds, three of hearts. I raised a 75 over a straddle. Small blind call, straddle calls. Three ways to eight, eight, nine, two spades. Now, when the action checks to me, I could bet here for protection, but I think a check is fine as well. So I decide to check back. Turn card, three of clubs, making another full house. Small blind check, straddle bets 150. Given the fact that I have pocket threes here, I don't block him from having top pair or trips or flush draws or straight draws. I decide to raise it up right away, make it $475. Small blind folds, straddle, snap folds. Ugh. This is somewhat tilting. Now, I can't complain about making big hands, but I really haven't been paid off. I mean, I didn't get paid off there with pocket sixes. I just made a full house with pocket threes, didn't get paid off. I made a set of tens on the river and didn't get paid off. So we're making big hands, but in poker, in order to make a lot of money, you also have to have your opponent's call, but can't complain. Making full houses is definitely fun. Another straddle on in this hand, and I'm in the big blind with 5-6 suited. I raise to 75, and I get min 3 bet here to 150 by a player to my left. Now, this is probably always aces or kings when players min raise. They want action, but with a suited connector here, very deep stack, I decide to make the call, try to crack those aces or kings. But when the flop comes out, ace, 3, 6, 2 spades. Probably not going to be putting any more money in here, but when I check, he checks back. Turn card 10 of spades, and now I feel like it's a spot that I could try to bluff here, try to get him to fold out kings or queens. I make it $125, and he makes a very quick call. River card 9 of hearts. I now have to figure out if I want to continue to bluff here, or if I just want to check and have him most likely check back a hand that's going to beat mine. When he three bets me pre-flop, I think he's going to have aces, kings, queens, and ace, king. But once he doesn't bet this ace high flop, I don't think he's going to have ace, king, or aces very often. He's probably going to have kings or queens. I also don't think he's going to have a flush very often because he's most likely going to see bet a flush draw on the flop or maybe even raise a flush on the turn. So if I bet here, I'm basically targeting queens or kings. This is a pretty bad board for those hands, and ace beats him. 
sets beat him, two pairs beat him, flushes beat him. So I decide to go for it here, turning my hand into a bluff. I make it $550. Four my kings again. I'm just gonna throw this in because uh, I ten three and I'm, I'm curious. I had ace nine. I had ten three. I had ace nine. He's got he's, he's so done. Oh fuck that was <laughs> My opponent shows pocket kings with the king of spades and folds. We get the bluff through. Another player at the table uses his kill button because he wants to see my hand. A kill button is something they use in this game where you can see your opponent's cards one time per game for free. So I show the 5-6 for a pair and we end up getting this bluff through which ends up leading in to the very last hand of the night. This wouldn't be a pocket pair poker vlog without ending with a pair, this time queens. There's an early position raised to $70 when there's no straddle. So a 7x open from under the gun. This particular player who raised from early position likes to play somewhat passive, doesn't like to bet huge preflop. Given the fact that he doesn't raise very often, he made it 7x from under the gun. I'm feeling a little bit worrisome here with pocket queens. He could easily have aces or kings in this situation. When a middle position player calls, I really think about 3-betting here, but I decided to get a little bit tricky. Also kind of pot control, and I just call $70 preflop. I don't 3-bet. Well, now the button re-raises to $325. So he did exactly what I was going to do. Early position player who raised a 7x preflop just calls 325. And now the middle position player just calls 325 as well. So now I'm almost certain I definitely have the early position player beat. If he had aces or kings, he would always re-raise here. If middle position player had a big hand, he would re-raise as well. So I think a back re-raise is the plan here. I decide to four bet to $1,370. Back over to the button who jams all in for about 1500 bucks. Early position player folds. Middle position player folds. And we are all in here against Ace King. It is a flip. Over $3,000 in the middle. Let's see if we can hold. First flop is excellent. Jack, Jack, Jack. We make a full house. Now we just have to fade an Ace or a King or a Jack on the turn. Oh my God. We're now counterfeit. We're playing the board. Quad Jacks with a Queen Kicker versus Quad Jacks with an Ace Kicker. So we lose the first run out. The second run out comes out King High with an Ace behind it. And we end up getting scooped. Losing over $1,500 here with pocket queens versus ace king. That one hurt kind of bad. When you get queens all in against ace king for a big pot, you're hoping to win. You're okay with chopping and you're not okay with getting scooped. Quads versus quads on the first run out and an ace and a king on the second run out. It's even worse because the early position player said he folded king queen suited and the other player said he had an ace. So my opponent here with Ace King only had about four outs to win, I think. But that is the game I signed up for. It's variant. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. Unfortunately, after this, the game ends up breaking. I end up booking a small loss and calling it a night. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Just finished up an hour of mountain biking in the hot Florida heat. I need some water and some air conditioning, but as for yesterday's session, kind of an interesting one. Got into a spot there with pocket jacks, 10, 10, six, I bet. My opponent jammed for $900. I called it off light with jacks, thinking maybe he could be shoving some worse pocket pairs or some flush draws, but we ran right into trips. Lost $1,000 there, but we clawed back to even making some more money there with a full house and some sets. And then the most unfortunate hand of the night, pocket queens all in preflop against ace king, losing both runouts to lose $1,900 on the day, but it could have been worse. It was a fun game, great group of guys. 
I'm going to go home, though. I'm riding back to my car now. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see ya.